Hey guys, Sir here. We're just going to be doing a few um, a few drafts today with the theme of uh, pushing. So I'll just be drafting hopefully three different uh, pushing lineups, and we can see uh, we can see how he chooses to deal with it here. I am drafting a guy against a guy called Rihei. Let's say we take the first pick here. So uh, for the first one, I want to do a classic lineup, which is a Death Prophet, a Dragon Knight, and Shadow Shaman lineup. Now, one thing I don't want to go up against there is face this void. He's also pretty big in the meta game, so I want to just <coughs> get rid of him. Um, an alternative to two of those heroes, if you can't get a Death Prophet, you can't get the Dragon Knight, would be um, Razor. Razor with Aghanims can push really well. Um, but yeah, this strat is, uh, is something that's been very little known, especially on the C scene. Um, yeah, it's Banduna. One thing I really don't want with this strat is uh, pick off heroes. Those are pretty good. Uh, so let me think. Yeah, I think we're gonna ban a bad rider here. Bad rider is pretty good. And it's very, very important when you do these push strats that, especially in the first two, that you aren't just ban banning out obvious, uh, obvious uh, anti-push heroes because then that'll be a very clear signal what you're doing. And your opponents can adjust for it. Now we're going for Shadow Shaman for one of our supports. Uh, which means that the other one should be someone with a good all-round stun. Uh, and I think... To set up just so we can ensure the Shadow Shaman can get into range. Um, and I think we're going to go with Lion here. So we're going to look to pick up our other, our other support. Other than the Shadow Shaman. And our offlaner in the first two here. Just so we make sure we don't reveal what we're doing. Those are basically the ones we can take without revealing anything about what we're doing. For our offlaner, I believe we're going to be taking Tidehunter. Uh, he's very, very uh, tanky and he's played in a lot of strats, doesn't reveal anything. He's got a big AoE stun, probably the biggest AoE <laughs> stun in the game in, uh, in Ravage of course. And that means, you know, then with the Lion and the, the Tide Hunter, we have a lot of teamfight capability. Already there. Oh, they're gonna go with a Tinker lineup. Didn't expect the Tinker uh, because he's playing Dire. Uh, Tinker's a little bit stronger on the Radiant. But we're not too worried about that. With the amount of tank and push we're gonna be pushing up with this lineup, I think it's, uh, it's gonna be pretty fine. Now, one thing I don't want him to get is the Beastmaster with the Tinker. Beastmaster Tinker is something uh, Fnatic popularized a little bit here with the, the International. You use the bird from the Beastmaster to TP in the Tinker anywhere. Uh, though it's it's uh, an unstable strat, it's still it's still pretty uh, pretty annoying. Luckily, he's banned out Doom, so I don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah, he doesn't have a clue what I'm doing, so he's just banning out Storm. Storm doesn't see too much of him these days. Uh, what would be really annoying? I think a Mirana would be really annoying. Just the, the arrows can just throw me off, and the ganking potential is pretty big. So we're going to be looking at picking up the Death Prophet and the uh, the Shadow Shaman at the next two, and that kind of gives us the core pushing. And he can't. He just. He only has one band left. He can't band up both the Dragon Knight and the Razor all at once. He could go ahead and just pick them here, I don't really know, but I don't think he will. The Tinker doesn't really, it's more of a split pushy hero. And that's actually really good for me because he doesn't actually push the tower very fast, he just pushes out lanes. And this is more of a five-man push lineup I'm looking to make. Bristleback's actually, it's okay. I think I might go with the Dragon Knight first then. Because the Dragon Knight's actually pretty good against Bristleback. But let's pick up the Shadow Shaman. Where are you? There he is, he's on Radiant. I keep forgetting that. I think I'll still pick up the Death Prophet here. 
uh, just because the Death Prophet will have a little bit of an easier time laning against the Tinker than uh, than the Dragonite will. Uh, any kind of melee against Tinker gets hairy because of the march of the machines. Just gets so efficient. Jakiro pick up here, so he's doing going with Jakiro, Crystal Maiden. This looks like one of my drafts from a long time ago. Uh, these three heroes, all something I'm very fond of. But uh, I don't think it's very strong here together. They have some, some okay disable. They've got split push. They have Bristleback, who's kind of a weird factor here, I think. Not very... Uh, not very good over that. One of the best things against the uh, Bristleback is this Death Prophet, so gonna definitely pick up her here. And I'm gonna look to lane her against the Tinker mid. Tinker pretty much only goes mid, so I can be pretty clear about the mid matchup here. I kinda understand why he wants to pick up Tinker so early because he's a really sought after hero these days. Very high value. Um, Excalibur, the stand in for Fnatic, yeah, really popularized that hero and really, you know. Yeah, really showed what it could do, <laughs> even at the hands of someone who's not a pro player, but you know, a very w very good pop player could just come in and, and if he gets free farm, just dominate uh, pro teams, even someone like DK. So, what would be the worst case scenario here? They're missing the they're missing the hard carry, and I think so. Silencer normally would be a bit of a problem, but uh, Shadow Shaman and Death Prophet, they kind of just throw out their ultimates and then. They still go on if the silence the silence is after that, so I'm not really too worried about that. I forgot to got same thing with Tide Hunter almost. Um, so what would be kind of bad? What would be kind of bad? Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards the Razor ban here, or maybe the Viper ban. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably probably gonna ban out the Viper here. We're not looking to pick him up. He's a really strong laner, uh, and, and he comes online pretty early. If they just pick up the Viper and get an early mech on him, or they could do it on the Bristleback still, but if they, they get an early mech on Viper, that could severely halt my, my five-man pushing capability. So, I don't want that. Um, they're probably, like... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh yeah. Now the modern style of, of doing this would be okay. They're gonna go lichen, so they're actually gonna go push as well. But we have okay. I think this is actually a decent lineup for it. I should have banned the lichen earlier, of course. Dire lichen is is a uh, very scary. But then again, if they're looking to, I think they're just gonna. He's gonna run out of farm because he's got two really greedy heroes. He's got the lichen and the uh, the tinker. So he's just. I think he's just gonna run out of farm. So I think it's gonna be the razor here. Um, we already have so much control. We have two hexes. We have the shackle. We've got the earth spike. We've got the ravage. We've got the silence from Death Prophet. We don't really need more control. And I think Razor is just a stronger bet here. Really good against uh, a lot of these heroes. Um, yeah, and, and the uh, the minus armor effect from his ultimate will be really good. So this is what we end up with. We're gonna run a tri lane in bot because we're radiant. So that's our safe lane. And Oops. Uh, tight hunter offlane. There we go. <coughs> it's probably gonna be just a bristleback offlane for him with um, a Lycan, Jakiro, Crystal Maiden, uh, Trident up top, and then Tinker versus Death Prophet mid. So I think the mid is pretty even. I think Death Prophet should have a pretty, pretty easy time getting farm. I think both of them should. Um, but at least the Death Prophet, she's got a very long range nuke and she's got some good uh, good ranged attacks so she can at least do something mid. Um. Okay, this is gonna be a Roman Crystal Maiden. This is a very poor choice. Uh, she's one of the slowest heroes in the game. She cannot do very much roaming, so... Um, it also leaves Jakiro and Lycan alone with Tidehunter, which means the Tidehunter can actually bully them pretty effectively. Jakiro is really good for harassing in, uh, in lane. But only if um, <coughs> only if you get some levels. Yeah. So I'll just uh, we've got a summary of the draft over here. But I'll uh, I'll go ahead and ask for a redraft, and we can try out another push strat against this guy. The next one we're gonna do, I think, will be uh, this time we will go for the lichen if he doesn't ban it out. So uh, we're ready. Sorry about that noise, but it's uh, yeah. We'll go for the dire now. The lichen uh, lichen strat I'm looking for is. Bit bit better on the dire side. Uh, we'll just say random. 
and he gets the first pick this time. This is good because I'm looking to pick up Lycan, uh, or Lycan and Nature's Prophet as our first two. There's a very strong synergy there between the uh, the Howl of Lycan with the Treants. They all get the bonus damage, so you can get some pretty pretty horrific pushing going with that. But there's a good chance he'll ban out Lycan. He is very big in the meta game. And if he does, I have another strategy. Yeah, there we go. I have another strategy in mind. But with the Lycan ban, we're just gonna say no Tinker. <laughs> I do have another another ban strat that or another another push strat that is uh, that's more niche that I could uh, could do, which is uh, Pugna Leshrac. In Pugna Leshrac, we really want to pick up in the last two because they are not uh, yeah they're not nearly as uh, as as used. So what don't we want to play against here? I think I'm gonna go ahead and say Morphling, actually. Morphling would be pretty bad. So again, Leshrac's pretty similar to Shadow Shaman in that they're both pushing supports that like having a setup stun. Uh, for Shadow Shaman it's because he doesn't have super much range, um, and for Leshrac it's because his stun takes so long to cast. So we're gonna look to pick up, again, a, a strong support with a stun in our first two. And because we're picking up Pugna, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take Lion again. This time because of the synergy between Finger of Death and uh, the Cryptify. So uh, we'll just take Lion. I'm not too uh, too worried about him getting Razor, but this time we're actually gonna go ahead and pick up the Bat Rider, I believe, because we wanna we wanna be able to get a pick off and then go into a push after that. Uh, and also we can use the the gold from uh, from the early tower pushes to get the Bat Rider up in his blick. Blink and once he has his blink, the bad rider gets uh, very potent. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. It looks like he might actually go into some push. I will probably ban out something like a death prophet or okay, vengeful. Not too worried about that one. It's um, she's got some heavy mana costs, which means the uh, the nether ward from Pugna will be be devastating on on her. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. So they ban out. Okay, if they think it's gonna, or he thinks it's gonna be a bad rider mid, I'm gonna ban out the tide hunter here, and then I'm gonna ban out viper again. This time because of the magic immunity, we really don't wanna have, to, or not magic immunity, but magic resistance. We don't wanna have to deal with that. Or I could ban out brewmaster. Should probably ban out brewmaster. He already has a good mid hero. Yeah, we're gonna ban out the brewmaster. Brewmaster, really, really big in the meta game. Don't wanna, yeah, go away too much. So I only have one pick here. Uh, it's much more important that I get the Pugna. If we don't get the the less rack, there's still other heroes we can go for. Um, but if if we give out that we're gonna go for the Pugna with the less rack pickup, then we are we're kind of fucked if he takes it or gets rid of it. I could have maybe saved the Pugna for last. But he can't really stop me from doing this now. Razor used to only be played mid, um, but these days he's played often as a as a safe lane farmer. He's really good. Um, yeah, he just he gets really tanky, and he can steal all his damage from an opponent. If you can't kill him fast enough, then he just ends up being like he's got all this all his items are just tank. He steals all your damage, and although he doesn't pump out super much damage, he ends up just negating so much of your armor with uh, with his ultimate that he can just push through anyway. Naga Siren here might be a little bit problematic, but uh, yeah, I can't ban it all. So we're still gonna go in for the last rack just for the pushing potential and for the, the combo of line. And then I have uh, a little bit of a, a last pickup I hope will, uh, will work out nicely. So the Pugna could go mid, or he could go safe lane. I don't really know what I want to do yet. Depends on what he picks here. If it, it's probably either gonna, it's gonna be one of these two mid, but I can't really know which one. Probably the Naga is a little bit more likely, but it could be a Naga support. Naga is really versatile, but she's also very late game oriented, which I think is good for my lineup. Okay, so it's not a Naga support. I think that's really good for my lineup because she's gonna take 
a long time to get up her radiance. If we can just take away all the map control, we've got a bad rider to kill her. It's uh, it's looking pretty good, I think. I think it's looking really good. <sighs> so this is probably a mid naga. This is a uh, a safe lane racer. And we're gonna I'm gonna think he's gonna do that at least. So what would you want to put off lane here? And I really don't want him to get something that can just stop me dead in my tracks and stop the push. Um, clockwork would be pretty bad. If he got clockwork, it could be uh, he could just pick off the Pokemon, and that's really we don't want. Like if he got the bad rider, that would be really bad for us because if you can engage the Pokemon before he gets his Nether Ward down, if he's alone and just drag him away, then you know <laughs> what am I really gonna do? Dazzle is also a, a pretty uh, late game oriented support. Um, he's really good in lane if you're in like an uh, an aggro trial versus aggro trial in the Shadow Grave can be really, really, really good. I was looking to pick up OD actually. The uh, Essence Aura with, with Pugna would mean that I could just keep pumping out uh, another blasts. And yeah, that would be really good. But uh, this is enough push. We don't really need more push. Um, we could use a little bit more control though. And I think. One thing that would be really good here, given the amount of nuke we've got, would probably be Silencer. Because Silencer kinda works like Bounty Hunter, except yeah, he just gains int instead of giving your team gold. So, because there's gonna be a lot of aggro this game, there's gonna be a lot of trades, if we can just have Silencer live through a bunch of it, then Silencer's gonna get huge. He's gonna get so much int stolen, it's gonna be a problem for him, especially for someone like Razor. He's gonna end up with not very much uh, int to do at all. Now this I don't get at all. Um, pretty much you only pick Magnus for a wombo combo. He's going to be the off laner this time. Or he's going to run dual lanes. <laughs> Hopefully he's going to be his off laner. And I don't think he's going to be able to do so much in the off lane here. Mm. I'm leaning towards running Silence in mid. And then having Pugna, Leshrac and Lion on our safe lane. So yeah, let's, let's go with that. That's going to be the top. That's going to be the bottom. Go. So, but if we can lead, um, yeah, if we can lead an Earth Spike into a Lashrak Stun, into another Blast, that should be uh, a yeah, split load from Extract. That, sh that should be a kill on the Magnus. Uh, though the Magnus has a very long engagement range, he, he can just run out of mana though. Um, and probably I'm gonna. Yeah, the Nagamid. Yes, pretty much called it there. Uh, so. Okay. He didn't wanna draft anymore. So I'll uh, I'll go ahead and, and queue up for another draft. There we go, ready up. Now we're gonna try for that. Um, I'm gonna go for the dire side. We're gonna try for the um, the um, lichen push again. If I can get the lichen, it is definitely not a uh, not a definite thing. Which means we're gonna ban out doom. Else I'm just gonna show you another uh, niche strat. But that was pretty much the uh, pushing lineups I wanted to show today. I've got the uh, the draft over here, so we can just talk about those. I don't know how well they are <laughs> shown in the frame, but we can just talk about those afterwards. He bans out the Shadow Shaman. Obviously I've been watching some TI, this guy's been picked all over the place. And he's really good, so yeah. Doom also really popular. So if we can't get um, if we can't get like and death, okay, we can. Cool. What do we want to ban out? We actually want to ban out Earthshaker, I think. Yeah, Earthshaker is the counter to that strat because obviously when you have a ton of minions, then Earthshaker will do a sick amount of damage. I'm hoping he doesn't know that. I'm really hoping he doesn't pick up like here, because <laughs> that'll be uh, be badness. Yeah, so I'm just gonna snatch these two up. That's kind of the gamble here. Lycan is so powerful right now that letting him through like this is a bit of a statement. Yep, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get the the Lycan, uh, Nature's Prophet like we wanted. And this, I think, is really good. So this is gonna be uh, an off lane uh, Nature's Prophet and a, a safe lane Lycan. Uh, and then we'll just pick up our two supports next round and we'll pick up our mid last. And the only reason why in this strat we pick up these two so early is because we really don't want to uh, to risk like and getting banned uh, that early. They're gonna go with Death Prophet, we're gonna ban out the Razor next. Because Razor is, is nasty business. 
It's weird that he he picked Skyraf, and then he banned out the Void, because that's usually the combo is you have something to hold them in place, and then you drop the Skyraf ulti on them. Um, so probably he's looking to pick up something like a Clockwork. Clockwork's the other one of the other big ones. The other big one is actually uh, another big one is actually Shadow Shaman. So that might be the next level uh, next level mind games he's uh, throwing at me here, just banning out the stuff we uh, kind of need. So. Yeah, I could also ban out a bad rider, but I'd rather get rid of Clockwork here. Yeah. Oh, Enigma. Yeah, okay, so he doesn't want... Like, he thinks I'm just gonna go all in on this, but this is really all I want from this right now. I don't want any more, um, more pushy stuff. So... We could go cheesy here and just pick up... Mirana Bane. Um for our support combo, because those two can pretty much set up kills very easily, and with the Nature's Prophet, if we go for an aggressive build on him, he can TP in on it, he can assist with his ulti, so that'll give us a way to create some space and get some uh, some good stuff going there, so I think we're actually gonna do that, and I think we're gonna... Yeah, we'll pick up the Mirana first, I think. So this is uh, this is a pretty cheesy lineup with it going, but it should be pretty good. He picks up a lot of his cores early, about the same as me here. Invoke on other those high uh, high value commodities, but it pretty much doesn't matter who you are. These two can pretty much kill you, like unless it's like a tide hunter who gets a lot of levels in Kraken Shell and can purge, stun once he takes enough damage, uh, or if they have like an Abaddon or something. But that forces you to kind of draft those heroes. The Titan is still up for grabs. He could go for that, but I don't know how good that will be. So I'm, I'm actually a little, little excited to see what he picks here. I don't know exactly what his plan is here. Oh. That's the Dazzle, okay. So he also kind of wants... He, it's obvious I have a very heavy gank combo here and he wants the Shallow Grave to try and get a, a chance of saving some of his people. Shallow Grave also pretty powerful with Death Prophet. If she pulls off her ultimate and you just Shallow Grave her, there's no way that ultimate can be cut short, or not that short. But uh, I don't think he's gonna do too, too much here. He might be looking for an aggro Trident, but his big problem right now is he doesn't have a way to hold him down for the, uh, for the Sky Wrath. And I will actually ban out a Bat Rider here, I think. I think Bat Rider is, is one of the ones I really don't want him to get. Because Lycan can escape from most things, but again, Bat Rider is one of the best initiations in the game. Really don't want him to get that. Would be super bad. Death Prophet mid. Death Prophet mid. I could just go with a Viper. I think I might just go with a Viper mid, because we, we aren't really looking to be straight up fighting. But if we go with a Viper mid, then we can just... Uh, we can get a, a fast mech on him, and he can kinda... He also supplies some DPS and stuff. My, maybe am I, maybe my 5 man just gets too weak if I go with a Viper, actually. Hmm, because we only... Like, we have a good amount of control on the Bane and the Arrow. And then like sprout. <laughs> it's not a lot. It's not a lot of control at all. So let's see. Do we have demos over time? Not really. I could go with like a. Um, <sighs> how to storm fair against this? My knowledge of mid laners isn't completely up to par. So I'm thinking this is gonna be an invoker or a death prophet. Probably an invoker mid. But I don't, I don't really know what's a good matchup to throw against him. I could just go with the OD, but that would that's kind of just a default. There isn't really a lot of synergy there, a lot of reason to go for him. Uh, another option would be Warlock. That certainly gives me some team fight and stuff, but eh, not a really good option. It's tempting to go for something like the Ember Spirit, uh, but he kind of needs too much farm for that. Because the thing with drafting these two is they take up a lot of farm. So if we draft Ember Spirit as well, who wants a lot of farm? Which kind of the attraction of the, the Viper is that he's not going to need a lot of farm and he can just kind of go online.
Maybe I just go for like a TA. But the problem is he's gonna get a pick after this. He could theoretically go for something like uh, a Venomancer or something like that. Does he have much tick damage? Yeah, he does actually. I can't go for TA. That's too much tick damage. Uh, could go for the Silencer again. That wouldn't be the worst option. Silencer would also make it pretty easy for my two split pushes to escape. And again, the longer the game goes, the silence is always going to be pretty good. Yeah, it, this is going to be the silence again. So, this probably is a hard... No, this has to be an offlaner from him, actually. Yeah, this has to be an offlaner. And... Uh, could... Can't be Clockwork. Can't be Bad Rider. I banned those artists basically because they're so good gankers. He does have Invoker, so... Maybe Centaur would be a good pick from him. Yeah, Centaur might actually be a pretty great pick. Um, it's gonna be Rave King. So this is gonna be dual lanes, probably, unless it's an offlane Invoker. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is probably something like a Rave King Dazzle lane. Yeah, th his problem is he doesn't have anything to lock down for the uh, for the Sky Raffle. Let's just see how he chooses to lane this. Uh, we just pretty much want to run this standard. No reason to take this aggro. Uh, he can go aggro if he wants. We don't really care so much. Yeah, he's gonna go aggro. He's gonna go with uh, Sky Raff, Dazzle, Rave King lane. Okay. Yeah. Right, I think that's um, that was really the drafts I wanted to show, so let's go ahead and talk about these drafts in more detail. So, here, yeah, this is his first draft. Um, we were the ones who wanted the... we, we went for the kind of... Uh, the try... Three, uh, the classic, classic sort of push lineup. Uh, normally it would be a Dragon Knight, Death Prophet, Shadow Shaman. But here we went with the Razor instead of the Dragon Knight. Razor is a little bit more popular at the moment. Um, and the way this works is just to have so much pushing power in the Razor or the Dragon Knight with the Death Prophet, with the Shadow Shaman, that you can just force push down anything. Um, the pitfalls in this lineup is sort of if you get too out team fighted. Like if your opponents can just go in and kill you. So Tidehunter is a good pick with it because Tidehunter is a really good team fight. He's also really tanky. The rest of your cores are really tanky. Um, with the Death Prophet and the, the Razor or the, um, the Dragonite, both of those are really, really tanky. So so having all three of them really tanky will inherently just make it really difficult. And also, they're all three really happy about engagements that take a long time. Sorry about the Skype sound. So, um, so yeah, in any kind of delaying tactic, any kind of stuff along those lines will be really good. Um, and yeah, you just don't want them to be able to shut down your 5-man push. This is a 5-man push strat. It's not a split push strat. It's not kind of chip away damage. It's go down, force towers down. It's also slightly slightly stronger on the Dire side. It has an easy time taking on Roshan with the Shadow Shaman and the, the Death Prophet. But you don't really need to be on the Dire side for, for this to be viable at all. We picked up the Lion uh, just for the, uh, the 850 range F spike and, you know, uh, just because he's a solid support all around that we can first pick without giving away anything of our strategy. Here we end up against the Lycan. Really good pick. That's the, the main main problem here is the Lycan and the Tinker has a lot of speed pushing power. Uh, but I think the supports here are going to be pretty weak for what they wanted to do. Uh, the Jakiro especially is not going to be high enough level to stop us from doing anything um, by the time we want to push down towers. He's got very little kill potential I think in this lineup. He's got two disables only. Where we have if, like tons, just these have these two supports, especially have two disables, two hard disables each. You'll notice we picked up both of the hexes in, in the heroes in the game uh, Lion and, and Shadow Shaman. We also have the, the Shaggling from the Shadow Shaman, we have the Earth Spike, we have the Ravage. So, tons of control coming from us. If, if they want to take us on in a 5v5 fight, that, that, that alone will make it horrendously difficult for them. So, yeah, we've also got instant silence against the Tinker, that's pretty big. Um, but yeah, it will be a question of whether or not the Tinker can stop us from pushing high ground, whether or not we can stop the Lycan from pushing down towers. 
enough around us. Uh, and I think maybe like it's, this isn't a, a clear win from us, but I think the Roman Crystal Maiden certainly makes it a lot easier because she doesn't have like she's just she's one of the slowest heroes in the game. I don't see why you would want her in a roaming position at all. That's a really poor choice. For the sync draft, uh, we went with the uh, the Pugna Lestrak again with a lion. This time the lion's heavy nuke ultimate. Uh, along with the lines of Linus ultimate, uh, the, the finger of death, Linus is called Laguna Blade. Uh, works well with the Crepify. We just want to Decrepify a target and then throw the finger of death at them. Pretty simple, does a lot of damage. We pick up a Silencer for our mid because they went for late game oriented heroes in the Ray and the, uh, the Naga sign especially. <laughs> Almost every game, Naga either goes for quick Midas or for just a direct, direct Radiance. And the Venus needs a lot of space for that. What isn't going to give her a lot of space is a Pugna and a Lestrak taking towers from minute 5. And that uh, that's really what we're going to look to do here. With the gold from the towers, we're looking to give Batrider here an early Blink Dagger. Uh, else our Lestrak and our Lion are going to stack up some camps for him. He can get a Blink Dagger that way if he gets grounded down. And from that point on, uh, I mean, once they start getting more potent, once we need to break the higher ground, our game plan is to get a pick off with the Batrider and then push high ground when it's 4v5 in our favor, <coughs> hopefully. They don't have a good way to stop the bad rider. They have shallow grave, and that's pretty much it. They also have okay, actually, they have vengeful swap, which is pretty good. But I mean, vengeful, other than that, isn't going to be doing super much here. There isn't um, anyone who can take full advantage of her, of her aura. The Magnus, I really don't understand. Like normally, when you do Magnus, you have something that can combo with him, but there literally isn't anything here that could combo. With him, like no, no AOE damage at all aside from racers, and racers are so huge, you don't need to gather people up with it. Like, if you had like a warlock or Sven is a big combo with with Magnus, or if you had Enigma, yeah, some more control or some heavy area of effect nuke that can work really well with him, but he doesn't, so I don't really know why he wanted the Magnus. But again, this is just a question of uh, super heavy pick. The mid I really wanted was OD. He's a strong mid, and I wanted uh, wanted the Essence Aura for the Pugna. So if you're pushing with a Pugna and the OD, if the OD has a max Essence Aura, there's a good chance you'll actually just be able to sustain push a lot more than normal because Pugna will just be spamming out the Nether Blast, and we'll be getting a lot of mana um, back from it because of the procs from the Aura. So, <coughs> so yeah. The one thing here is we are kind of heavy on magic damage. If they pick up BKBs, it could be a little difficult, but that's pretty much just a razor. I think this one favors us a lot. Uh, just because, yeah, it's going to be hard for them to get a kill on the bad rider with this setup. It's going to be hard for uh, for the Magnus to really farm well against this. Uh, Magnus in general isn't a very strong laner. Um, and yeah, the, the mid also pretty good for us. Not, not super good, but pretty good. Like the Silencer should do pretty well. He's got a huge harassment potential in him. And the, the Naga can't really take last hits without exposing herself to like a last word, so should be good. Last draft. This was the uh, the <laughs> the very cheesy one, the the Lycan uh, Nature's Prophet. And this is um, yeah, he chose actually to go with uh, an aggro Trident against us here, which I think is the most interesting part of this. He wants the the Invoker to go up against the Nature's Prophet here. Which I think is also interesting. I don't know how that lane is going to pan out, but we also have a fairly even mid lane. So this this one really comes down to whether or not our um, our setup here will do well against his. We've got kind of a space creating duo here uh, in the Mirana and the Bane. Bane really good late game potential. Mirana very bad late game potential as a support. Mirana when you pick her as a support, everyone says that pretty much she's an arrow at level one. And then she just kind of decreases in value from there. So you really want to set up something with those arrows. And when you have a Bane, you can set up something pretty easy. With the extra damage from Howl, we should be able to bring in kills. Um, and, you know, <coughs> it's it's um, it's a question of how much they can get done here. Uh, I think the Skyref is kind of the old man out here. Or very much the old man out here. And I think if we catch, if we catch the Dazzle out with the Bane, the Dazzle is pretty much dead. If they can't get the shallow grave of whoever is uh, is yeah getting going on, will probably die in that lane. But it's it's a little iffy. I think um, I think once Lycan gets his wolves up, it'll also be yeah 
it'll also be better for him to farm than for the, the Rave King here. So normally when you do an Arkham Trialing, you're either looking to just shut them down with a very strong kill potential, or to just shut down the farm and let your, uh, let your solo, solo safe laner get better farm because of it. In this case, it's an Invoker. I don't really see what Invoker is supposed to do uh, here. And again, I don't see anything to lock down for the, the Sky Wrath. Or even anything to use his, his semi-instant silence for really, aside from maybe getting pick-offs on the Lycan and the Death Prophet, or the Nature's Prophet. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, it, this looks pretty good. Uh, it's, it's more, it's closer than the, uh, than the, the Prime, it's closer than this one. Um, it, it depends sort of a lot on how this top is going to work out, I think both of these lanes are going to work out fairly even. They've got equally good chances of doing stuff. Um, Maybe the bot here, the Nature's Prophet, just if we can time the Howl right, then I think the Nature's Prophet could have a very big impact, just uh, or a very easy time against the Invoker, because the, the Treants will do so much damage. I don't know how easy of a time the Invoker will have that. He is ranged, so it isn't uh, the worst thing for him. But yeah, that was just uh, three, cri uh, three, three quick drafts here, with, uh, with some pushing lineups. I hope you've enjoyed it, and... Uh, yeah, uh, oh yeah, one thing, um, the supports here, and our mid position, uh, we want someone who can create some space, who can kind of create diversion, so do something as, as a team here, and one of the best for that is, is Bane Mirana, they can set up kills fairly easy, certainly with an Aegis Prof that can TP in on them, um, and that's really what we want, we want to create space for these two in the mid game and the late game, to, um, to roam around and create pressure on our opponents, and that's really what the Bane Runner here is, is uh, supposed to do, and what we'll be looking for any kind of support duo to do. Uh, you could also do like Shadow Demon Last Rack, you could do Shadow Demon Lina, um, you could do like a Sand King, or you could do. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, you could really do a Storm Mid, would also be decent. But I mean, the Silencer Mid is kind of the only. I, I'm very partial to Silencer, so that's why you seem picked up a lot by me. But it's uh, that's that's the only odd one out here. I just think it's a really strong hero, and I wanted a decent mid lane against both of these. So yeah, I think this is this is pretty good. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. My name is Ben Cerebellum. This has been Academy of the Ancients, and I'm out.